everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making 22 cards with the Echo Park Cupid & Company collection. And before we get started with this card tutorial, go ahead and click that the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber and turn on your bell notification so that you can be notified every time I release a new video. So in this collection, I purchased the ephemera pack as well as the frames and tags. I also picked up the 6x6 paper pad and I love that little old-fashioned truck. That truck is included in a lot of the designs on the not only the sticker sheet that you see here but also in the paper pad. I also picked up the 12 by 12 paper which is the solids collection and that consists of six double-sided pages in just some of the solid colors that match the paper pad. So here's a look at the paper pad. Notice these cut up parts that are in the paper pad. I did not use those. This paper pad consists of 24 sheets and you get two of each design. They are double sided, but I did not use those cut aparts because they were all a lot of sentiments. Here's another page of cut aparts, which the frames and the tags and the ephemera provided me with a whole lot of sentiments, actually more than I could actually use in my video. So I I chose just to use all of the pattern paper rather than using those cut aparts in that paper pad. So here's a look at all of the frames and tags that are included in that package. And what I like about these is that some of them are actually perforated so you can take them apart and you can turn these into shakers. So these frames, I actually took two of them in my cards and turned them into shaker cards, which I really, really love. Some of them I felt were not really appropriate for cards, more for scrapbooking. And the same thing with the ephemera pack. Again, a lot of sentiments are included in here. I think it was a lot more sentiments than I was hoping for, but I was so glad that I purchased the sticker sheet because the sticker sheet gave me a lot of stickers that I can incorporate into my cards. So for my first card, I am going to be using a card sketch and I am going to be using card sketches for many of my cards in this video today. So the card sketch that I am going on off of is the MFT 230 and I will put a link to this in my blog as well as all of the measurements of all of these papers that I trimmed down that way you'll have them so if you're trying to recreate any of these cards you can hop over to my blog at lisamearscarddesigns.com and there will also be a coordinating blog post in the description box below in this YouTube video so here for this card I chose to use the how sweet it is to be loved by you and that particular tag I decided I was going to bring in some stickers which are some of the strawberry stickers which you'll see here in just a minute and then for this particular um, piece of ephemera I decided that I was going to go ahead and trim down to make it look more like a banner because the ephemera piece was actually all squared off on the side so I wanted it to look like the fishtail banner all around so I went ahead and trimmed that down so I'm going to go ahead and layer on my tag. I did bring in the solid color 12 by 12 paper. That's the red there that you see in the background. And then you see the pattern paper. And for my card base on this card, I'm actually bringing in a pre-cut card base. And I get my card bases. Some of them I get in the craft store. But I think this particular um, video, my card bases were from Amazon. And I will link those down below too. Sometimes it's just easier when you can actually have a pre-cut card base. All you have to do is fold and um, put your card right on top of that. So here's the strawberries. I went ahead and added the strawberry stickers. And then one of the strawberries, I'm actually going to put double-sided adhesive foam on the back just to pop up um, on top of the larger strawberry. And then I'm going to take a little piece of hot glue there and then just put it in the middle of that tag and add a ribbon and then add that card to the actual card base and that completes card one. Now for my second card I went off the same sketch and I used the my heart belongs to you tag and added a heart sticker as well as an XOXO from the ephemera pieces and for my third card it was also the same sketch using a different tag this is the XOXO hugs and kisses be mine smitten and love and I also added the XO um, stickers from the sticker sheet. 
So for my cards in this video, I actually have 17 unique cards that I created and then the remaining five cards are off of the same sketch as a previous card. They would have different ephemera pieces on them, but it was a very similar sketch so I didn't show the design for every single card. So for this particular card, I am using the Mojo Monday Sketch 524 which you see there lying on my table and I've already cut the pieces and for those diagonal strips that you see under that circle on that sketch I am using the ribbon die from the Stamps of Life and you can see that die it's laying there on the table and I just cut with, with my die cutting machine two strips of the solid red cardstock from the solid cardstock sheets to create those strips. So here I'm going ahead and adding the panels that are going to be underneath those strips and basically what I did is I took two pieces of the red cardstock from the solids, cut those down to size and also cut down some of the flower pattern paper and layered those directly on top. Again, all of the measurements will be in my blog. So if you don't hear me say any of the measurements, just go to my blog and you'll be able to see all of those there. I also brought in a stitched circle and die cut a piece of the red solid color cardstock to lie underneath of the sentiment. And the sentiment says, be mine. It's um, a heart shape. It's a flower heart shape that says, be mine with a banner there in the middle. So that actually layered on perfectly to that stitched circle that I die cut out. And the stitched circle die is from the Stamps of Life and I don't know if I mentioned that ribbon die is also from the Stamps of Life. So there I'm going to go ahead and add that entire layer to my card base. The card base is an A2 size card base and all of my card bases for this video are A2 in size which measure four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm just going to glue that down and that will complete this card. For card five, I'm using the Mojo Monday Sketch 527. I will be creating two cards based on this sketch. Now for that top layer, I cut down that pattern paper that, so that it measures three and three quarters by four, and I'm just rounding the corners with my rounded corner um, puncher that you see there. And I do that for the top piece, which is the pattern paper, as well as the solid pink paper that's going to be the background piece. And that solid pink paper measures three and seven eighths by four and an eighth. Now I'm taking the large XOXO paper, which measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and I'm going to layer that on that solid pink cardstock paper that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'm just going to follow the sketch and lay those on there um, as you see. And you can also see that this particular card sketch, it actually has some measurements written on that card sketch. And what's nice about a lot of the Mojo Monday sketches is that they do include measurements. So if you actually are looking for card sketches, go on Pinterest and do a search for card sketches or you can actually search for Mojo Monday's card sketches. And a lot of the ones by Mojo Monday, they do include measurements. Not all of them, but a lot of the ones I've seen do. Now for my cards, I will be using some of the measurements if, I've, if they have them on there, but others I'm going to adapt. So even though the measurements might be listed as one thing on the actual card sketch, I might not use those measurements and you'll see later on in this video when I'm trying to use up some scraps, I'll still go in and use some of the card sketches, but I'll modify the measurements based on the size scraps that I'm using. So you can see I'm adding one of the ephemera pieces, one of the sentiments there, I love you a bushel and a peck, adding, I added a ribbon there, tied that in a bow and added some hot glue to keep that down. That sentiment I did adhere up on some foam tape just to give it some dimension. And I'm also bringing in one of the stickers. It's this flower stand, which I think is so adorable. And I actually put some double-sided foam on the back of that and I'm gonna pop that up as well. So if you didn't get the sticker sheet and you just wanted to make cards with sentiments, the ephemera pieces and the, um, 
what was it, the frames and tags is what I think it was called. Those have a lot of sentiments and you can just make cards with sentiments using your pattern paper. But I liked bringing in these sticker sheets because they actually had some really nice stickers, just some pictures that you can include just for some accents on your cards. So that completes that card. And then the second card was a similar layout. And here I just used the setting All My Love sentiment and added some heart epoxy dots that I pick up, picked up at the, my local craft store. So for card seven, I'm going to be using the MFT Sketch 416. And I love these next two cards that I'm going to do because they are actually going to include that adorable old fashioned pickup truck, which that's one of the reasons why I purchased this collection because I absolutely love the old fashioned pickup truck. So I'm gonna be bringing in the sticker as well as this pattern paper that has that truck on it as well. So here I'm bringing in this banner and just like I did with one of the previous cards, I didn't want to include all the extra cardstock around that banner. So I'm just using my scissors and just trimming this banner down to make it look like a real banner. This way, when I add it to my card, I can actually see more of that beautiful pattern paper showing up behind it rather than having an edge to that ephemera piece and blocking a lot of that pattern paper. So that pink plaid paper, it measures four by two and a half. And then the piece underneath it is four and an eighth by two and five eighths. And then I just put that there towards the top with the pickup truck sticker on there. The large pattern paper underneath that layer is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And that's layered onto a piece of red solid cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half. So there's the happy Valentine's Day. I did put some double-sided adhesive on the back of both of those layers so it's not only on the banner but on the back of that large rectangle that has the pickup truck just to add some dimension and height to that and then I was able to add the twine in the middle and then just tie a bow I also added a glue dot in the middle of that bow just to hold it down to that card and then I took some red epoxy dots that I picked up at my local craft store and just added them to the front of this card layer here was just trying to decide where I wanted them and what size and color I wanted to use. So I ended up going with the pink hearts and then I just add this entire layer to the front of an A2 size card. And that will complete this card. So here's a picture of the card with the red pickup truck and then here is a picture of the one with the pink pickup truck and I chose the sending you loads of love sticker and put that there at the bottom for the sentiment. For card nine, I am using the OWH Sketch 146. And here I'm using some scraps. So I am gonna be using my own measurements. You can see that flowered paper that I had in my hand there. It is a scrap and you can see that it has that circle punched out, that's the top of the paper pad. All of those sheets in that paper pad actually have a circle in the very top of the pad. I guess that's for if the paper pad is on a you know, rack at the store. I'm assuming that's what it's for. But anyway, I kept all of those papers and I did use some of my scraps that have that. But the nice thing about that is that when I add it to the card, I'm gonna cover it up with something, whether it be another piece of cardstock or a sticker. And in this card, it will be a heart sticker. So I was able to use that. So I'm not using the measurements that you see there on the sketch. I actually created my own measurements because because some of these papers are just scraps and I was going with what I had in my stash there so go to look at my blog and you'll be able to see all the measurements that I use but of course you can always use the measurements that are on this card sketch if you wanted to do that as well so I'm bringing in the you are forever in my heart that was one from one of the ephemera pieces. I layered that onto a piece of pattern paper and that flower pattern paper is two and a half by three and three quarter and then that's layered onto a pink square or pink rectangle that's measured two and five eighths by four and seven eighths. 
And then I also have that pink strip, which is four and an eighth by two. I bring in that banner, the pink and white banner, layer it underneath there. I do bring in a heart sticker, and that's what I covered that little hole up with. I'm also going to be bringing in some red epoxy dots just to add some accents there, and that will complete this card. So for my next card, this card is going to be a shaker card. And those of you that have been following me on YouTube for a while now know that I love to make shaker cards. And I've recently actually just posted a lot of shaker cards on my YouTube channel using some dies from the Stamps of Life. But when I saw the tag collection in this collection, I first thing I thought of was I'm going to make a shaker card with those tags or, or frames. They're not tags, with the frames. So that's what I did. So here I'm just layering up some cardstock. I'm using the black and then the pattern paper. I actually have several layers here. So I want to just go ahead and focus on how I made this shaker and you can go to my blog and look at all the measurements for this card if you're interested. But I took this frame and I took out the perforated portion that says be mine. I did place the outside frame on that um, piece of um, pattern paper layer just to make sure that it was going to be centered correctly on that layer. So I went ahead and glued that be mine down and then I took a piece of acetate and I'm just trimming it down so that it fits this frame. So I want to make sure it's it's extending beyond the rectangle but it's not extending so far beyond those scallops. So it needs to be positioned just perfectly so that it covers the actual opening of that frame and then I'm just putting some glue there and just rubbing it in with my finger just to make sure it doesn't leak outside of that acetate. So here I'm just gluing on the acetate and then just pressing that acetate down and then I'm just cutting down some strips of foam. And the shaker bits that I'm using are quite small, so I'm able to get away with just doing one layer of foam. If your shaker bits are much larger, you might need to double up on your foam. And then all you need to do is just outline the middle portion there of your frame, just beyond that window, and just connect your foam into a rectangle shape and just make sure that all corners of your foam are um, touching because you don't want any shaker bits to fall outside of any open spaces. So again just make sure that all the foam is connected so that when this is put together your shaker bits aren't falling out of any holes. So that foam it's double sided so I'm just taking the sticky off one side attaching it to that frame and then leaving the sticky on the back of the other side until I'm ready to take that off. So here I'm just emptying some of the shaker bits inside of that window just to make sure that my foam is going to cover that up when I add the acetate. So I'm just flipping that over just to make sure those will shake. If they don't shake, you might need to lay another layer of foam, but mine shake. So I'm going to go ahead and dump them in the middle of that um, layer where it says be mine. And I actually end up taking a bunch of those out because if you put too many in, you will not be able to see the sentiment on the inside because the shaker um, mechanism there is so small. So then I'm just going to go ahead and layer that frame right on top and there's the shaker piece. So I will link down below if you're interested in those shaker bits. I, they are on scrapbook.com and I'll put a link down below. They have a whole bunch of different kinds for Valentine's Day and I love these because they're so pretty and they're so small and you don't have to layer up multi, multi layers just to um, do a shaker card. So here I added that flower strip there on the left and as I was looking at it I think I added it a little bit crooked but I couldn't remove it because the glue that I'm using is pretty strong and it would just tear the paper so I just left it as it is and I did use the ribbon die like I used in one of the previous cards to die cut a piece of black cardstock and used the ribbon die underneath that and added the shaker piece. I am adding some of the shaker pieces to the outside just as some accent pieces. Now if you didn't want to do this as a shaker card you don't have to do it as a shaker. You can just attach that ephemera piece as a flat piece. 
I am going to be making another shaker card in my next card, so I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the process again. So that white square is 2 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths, and I'm just positioning that frame over top of it, making sure it's centered, and then I'm going to glue down the Hello Love sentiment right in the middle. And then I'm taking a piece of acetate and just trimming it down. Again, just making sure that that acetate covers that window but does not extend beyond that rectangle. Adding some glue to the inside border. And then I'm going to add that acetate to keep that down with some glue. And then I'm going to add my shaker bits. And here I'm kind of picking and choosing which ones I want to use. I don't want to use a whole lot of white um, because that whole middle part is white. So I think I only used a few white pieces. Add them to the middle there and then I just want to make sure that it's going to look okay and I don't have too many shaker bits. I decide to add a few more because remember if you have too many shaker bits and then you start shaking it, you won't be able to see that sentiment. So here I'm going to go ahead and add some foam just to surround the edge of that shaker element. Again, make sure that your foam is connected on all corners because you don't want your shaker bits to fall out. Now again, if you don't want to add make this a shaker card, you don't have to. You can just make this a flat card doing the same exact design that I've done. Just you can skip this step and just add the actual frame to the um, card layer. And there is a sketch that I'm following which is the Mojo Monday 512 and it is lying there on the table but all these card measurements will also be in my blog post. So here I'm going to go ahead and add my frame and that's it for the shaker piece. So that shaker piece is all done and now I can finish putting this card together. So I have that pattern strip that measures 1 and 7 eighths by 5 and 3 eighths. And I'm going to add that to a piece of red cardstock that's 4 and 1 eighth by 5 and 3 eighths. This card I'm not adding too many layers. I find that when you add layers, it gives it a nice look. But as you start making multiple and multiple cards, you start running out of cardstock much quicker. So some of these cards I didn't add as many layers on because I wanted to be able to make more cards because I had so many ephemera pieces that I wanted to use and I didn't want to run out of too much of that solid card stock that I use for the layers. So here I'm I am adding some of the shaker bits to the front. I did add some of the banner stickers. Those were banner stickers that were in the sticker sheet. I added two and layered them up there at the very top. And then after I add the um, heart embellishments there, those shaker bits, I'm going to go ahead and add this to a white A2 size card base and that would complete this card. For my next card I wanted to use some of the stickers, the kissing booth sticker and the admit one kissing booth ticket sticker. I decided to take a powder tool and just kind of get rid of some of the sticky on the back of those stickers which as I created this card, I probably didn't even need to do that. I was thinking I was just going to use these as die cut pieces, which I did, but I probably could have left the sticky on there. So that red paper is 4 and an eighth by 5 and 3 eighths. The striped paper is 4 by 5 and a quarter. I am bringing in a strip from my scrap, from my scraps that I had in previous cards, and that strip is one half by four inches. I am bringing in a red doily. This was just in my stash. I think I probably got them at Target a few years back. So I'm just going to add some glue to the back of this and add that there to the top of that card. And I'm going to go ahead and add these ephemera pieces. Now some people might not think to use these on a card. These are geared toward scrapbook pages, I think. A lot of this ephemera, kissing booth, only 25 cents per smooch, pucker up. I think that's so cute. And then the kissing booth sticker and then the admit one. I just think it's cute for the front of a card. So I did add some double-sided adhesive foam tape to the back of the sticker. The other items are laying flat behind it. So that um, ticket will just be raised up on top of those ephemera pieces. 
and then I do end up adding some twine. I wrap the twine around that entire layer and tie it in a bow and I do add a glue dot underneath the middle part of the bow just to keep it down on that card layer and then I will add some red epoxy dots down to the bottom right hand corner of the card and I do add a ephemera piece in the inside that says together is my favorite place to be and that completes that card. For this next card I have a piece of red solid cardstock that's four and an eighth by five and three eighths and then the pink plaid paper is four by five and a quarter and those are layered together. I am bringing in the true love is the greatest adventure with the bicycle. I thought that matched the bicycle sticker perfectly but I didn't want to have two bikes on the front of this card. I thought that kind of looked a little weird so I decided that I was going to take that ephemera piece and trim off the top part but before I do that I'm going ahead and adding the sticker um, of the bike I do add the balloon as well so here you see me first I cut off the top of the tag and I'm like no I've got to keep going and take off the bicycle as, as well so I end up with this and I like it a lot better and it also gives me more room on my card so it's not extending too far down and I just poke out those holes on that ephemera piece and add that to the top of the card. Add a couple red epoxy dots there and add that to my white A2 size card base. And that will complete this card. I really love this card. It's very simple, but I love it. I think it's really cute. For my next card, I knew I wanted to use this mason jar pattern paper, and I knew that I wanted to bring in the mason jar sticker since it matched. So here I cut out some stitched rectangles using some stitched rectangle dies. The solid pink paper underneath that mason jar sticker is cut out of a stitched rectangle, and then that's layered onto some white cardstock. And then I have the mason jar pattern paper, which was cut out of a larger stitched rectangle, and that was layered onto the same solid pink cardstock stock and then the entire layers put on an A2 size white card base. So here I'm just tying some twine around the smaller piece of cardstock there with the mason jar and then I'm adding some double sided adhesive foam to the back. I'm adding the foam above the twine as well as below the twine because you can't add that flat to the card because the twine has some height in it and it will not lay flat so you have to add the double sided adhesive foam just to make sure that that lays flat and then there I'm just going to add a glue dot to keep that bow down and this again is a very simple card I just end this card just by adding some red epoxy dots just to add a little bit more color to this card and that will complete this card for this next card I wanted to use the large tag which is Cupid and Company special delivery sending loads of love there again is that cute little red pickup truck and this tag is a perfect sentiment and it fills up most of the front of an A2 size card so this card didn't have too many layers but I still added a few things there notice that the pattern paper once I turn that layer over you'll see that the pattern paper has the same colors the craft and then the flowers and that pattern paper is so cute it says happy valentine's on it on those little um, buckets of flowers so that pattern paper measures four by five and a quarter and that's layered onto some red cardstock which is four and an eighth by five and three eighths which that is layered onto the craft a two size card base and then that strip underneath the tag that is one by four and that was from a scrap that I had and all I do to finish this up is just to add a bow at the very bottom of that tag and also add two epoxy dots next to the words special delivery and I think that turned out super cute. So for my next card I have some pieces here. I have a pink piece which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I also have that really pretty pattern paper which measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths and that's layered onto the pink cardstock and then I have this plaid paper 
which is three by three and a quarter. And that striped piece is five and a half by one and a quarter. I am using a card sketch for my design and it's OWH 49. And you can see it there. I will also link this card sketch in my blog so that you can see it a little bit better close up. And I am adding a piece of pink. It's a pink rectangle and that is three and a half by two and two and three quarters and I'm layering on the sentiment I love you a bushel and a peck right on top of that and then I'm gonna put that entire layer onto a white A2 size card base I will add some twine as well as some pink hearts just to add some more color to this card for my next card I'm using a piece of um, pattern paper it's that heart shape pattern paper. I'm going to use that for the middle of the card. That measures two and seven eighths by five and a half. And I take this plaid, pink plaid paper that I have. It was one strip that I had as, as a scrap and I just cut it down to one and five and a half. So I had um, a one inch strip on each side. So I just use those there under the layer just for an accent piece and then add that entire layer to a red piece of solid color cardstock that measures three and three quarter by five and a half. And then I just trim off the excess on the top and bottom of that strip and then that's gonna end up going on my craft A2 size card base. But before I do that, I am going to add a couple things here. So I do add some twine to that layer around towards the bottom just cut a piece of twine and tape it in the back with some double-sided adhesive tape. The Happy Valentine's Day sentiment, I do put some foam at the top and bottom of that sentiment, but leave a little space there in the middle for the twine to sit because that sentiment's not gonna be able to be added flat to that card because that twine is so thick. So that heart was a sticker from the sticker sheet, the flowered heart, as well as the craft heart that's on the middle. And then I just add that to the card base. Now I do tie a bow in some of the twine, add it with some hot glue there to the side of that um, sentiment, and that completes this card. For this card, I am gonna be making two with the same layout, and I'm using the Viva La Verve sketch from August 2016. And this card is great when you have a bunch of strips of paper that are left over from previous cards that you've done. And I have three strips here that measure one and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm just adding them directly to my white card base. In fact, that middle strip there, you can see the hole that is punched out of the um, top of that pattern paper, but it's going to be covered up, but I went ahead and used it anyway. So I am going to be taking a doily, and this doily, I, I think I got it at Michael's, but it could have been Target. I'm thinking it was Michael's, and I'm thinking that it was this year. And I just add the pink doily there. I am adding one of the sticker hearts to the center, as well as a sticker sentiment that says, I love you, and adding some of the sticker heart. Um, actually, those aren't stickers. Those are like epoxy dot hearts to the front. And I add forever and always on the inside with some stickers. And that completes that card. And then for my second one, I do the same thing with some strips of paper. Used a white doily and the sentiment is always and forever with a red epoxy dot heart. And that completes that card. And for card 20, I am using paper play sketch number 17. And I have lots of layers on this card. Again, these are going to be in my blog. So while you watch me at assemble this card, I just want to tell you really quick, this will be my um, last video for Valentine's Day collections that I will have it will be having in 2021. However, I do have some Valentine's Day cards and projects coming up on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in seeing more Valentine's Day stuff, please make sure you're subscribed and turn on your bell notifications so that you can be notified when those come out. And there'll be more like I want to say projects um, or crafts, kind of like my 12 Days of Christmas craft series. So I have a couple little, you know, treat type crafts for Valentine's Day that are coming up. And I also did a Simple Stories Sweet Talk collection. I did a lot of cards with that collection, which I will put a link to that one 
in the description box below in case you're interested in that. In the meantime, here is my card. I am using the Love Sweet Love tag, and I'm also bringing in the flower bouquet, and I'm just adding some foam, double-sided adhesive foam to pop that up. That is from the sticker sheet. So again, I love the sticker sheet because you can actually add more accents to your cards because those ephemera pieces and the tags with the frames, they didn't have a whole lot in there. So I go ahead and add this to an A2 size card base and I do add a few um, little red gems to the front and that completes that card. For this next card, I am going to be using the Mojo Sketch 539, and I have that XOXO paper, which measures 4 and 8 by 5 and 3 8, and then I have this plaid um, scrap that measures 4 and 7 8 by 1 and 7 8. Add that there to my card. Notice I'm not putting a layer underneath that like I've done in the past just because I was starting to run out of cardstock um, sheets and I just was trying to use up some scraps and make some very simple cards. So the strip at the bottom is 5 8 by 4 and an eighth and I add that there and then I take the sticker from the sticker sheet, the box of chocolate and add that on top. I do add the XOXO tag. I thought that matched perfectly with that XOXO pattern paper, so I had to use that. Add that there to the top of that panel and add that to an A2 size white card base. I also bring in some twine, which I will tie in a bow, and I will add it to the top of that tag with a glue dot. So that's going to complete this card. And for my last card, I have the dessert tray. That is from the stickers. And I add that to a rectangular piece of pattern paper, which measures two and three quarters by two and a quarter. I do add some double-sided adhesive foam to the back of that layer, because that's going to be popped up. And that strip of pattern paper is one and seven eighths by five and three eighths. And that's gonna, all of that's gonna go on a pink piece of cardstock, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I am using the XOXO banner, which I also added some double sided adhesive foam to the back because I wanted that to pop up as well. It was too long for that card, so I end up cutting some of that off. I am gonna tie some pink twine around the middle portion of that cardstock layer and tie that in a bow and that's going to go right up against that rectangular um, layer there with the cake stand with the cupcake stand and I'm going to go ahead and add that now this twine that I'm using is not as thick as some of the other twine I used previously which you can actually layer on cardstock layers right on top of that without any problem because it's not as thick so that entire layer is going to go on an A2 size card base just a white card base and then I'm going to add some heart epoxy dots to the front of that card and that will complete this card. So once again here's a look at all 22 cards that I created with the Echo Park Cupid and Company collection. I will link all of these products down below and on my blog in case you're interested in this collection. And go ahead and leave me a comment down below letting me know which card in this collection was your favorite. And if you liked this video, as always, give me a like. And again, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more card making tutorials and turn on your bell notifications so that you'll be notified every time I release a new video. Thanks so much for watching everyone and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.